Hello, I want to take you through absolute and comparative advantage, these two theories uh, of trade which uh, have been around for a, I don't know, a couple of hundred years and I, I, you know, people's, every year they get stuck, on, especially on comparative advantage. Um, so let me go through these. Very quickly, I'll deal with absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is said to exist uh, when a country can make a product more cheaply than any other country. Okay, it's as simple as that. It's a comparison of financial cost of production. When a country can make a good more cheaply than any other country. That's absolute advantage. Comparative advantage is trickier. Because comparative advantage between two countries, trading two goods, to keep it simple, comparative advantage is said to exist not when we compare the financial cost of making a good, but when we compare the opportunity cost. What does the country have to give up in order to make a, a, a good? If it's less than another country has to give up to make a good, the first country has comparative advantage. Let me show you a mathematical example of this. Here, I'm going to put in some numbers. I want you to, to, to understand this is not the volume of production. It's the hours needed to make one car and one ton of cheese. We're going to imagine that the only products in this strange world are cars and cheese. And there are only two countries, the UK and China. Both countries can make cars and make cheese with their limited resources, and the cars are the same whether they come from the UK or China, and the cheese is the same whether it comes from the UK or China. Strange world, but anyway, it's a simple world, and it works to, to show you David Ricardo's theory of comparative advantage. So let me put some numbers in. Um, imagine in the UK it takes 15 hours to make a car, but in China, in China it only requires four hours to make a car. Clearly, it's cheaper to make cars in China than it is in the UK. I'm assuming the costs of production are the same. I'm assuming that uh, in terms of um, per hour and per worker. And, um, if it only takes four hours to make the car in China and it takes 15 hours in the UK, it's clear that China has absolute advantage in car production. What about the cheese? Well, the cheese in the UK requires five hours to make a ton of cheese, and in China it only requires two hours to make a ton of cheese. So when it comes to cheese production, China also has absolute advantage. It seems that there will be little point of China specializing in either car or cheese production when they can make both of the goods cheaper than the UK. But David Ricardo showed with comparative advantage that when we compare the opportunity cost of production, it's clear that each country has uh, a comparative advantage. Let me show you. So, let's calculate then the opportunity cost of, of, of for these countries when they choose to make one good and not the other good. When they're making a car, to make one car, the UK, which needs 15 hours to make a car, gives up three cheeses because with those 15 hours making a car, they could have made three cheeses. Each cheese takes five hours. The UK gives up three cheeses. China, China gives up two cheeses because when they make a car using four hours of resources, they could have made two cheeses. So clearly, when making a car, the lowest opportunity cost is in China. They only have to give up two cheeses. Therefore, China has comparative advantage in car production because they're giving up less cheese. There's lower opportunity cost. So I'm just going to replace this with, therefore, China has comparative advantage in car production. Now, if you repeat the exercise asking if they make a cheese, how much of a car do they not make, you'll find that the UK has comparative advantage in cheese production. Let me just run through it. If the UK makes cheese, they give up one third of a car. If China makes cheese, they give up half a car. Because in the two hours that they need to make the cheese, they could have made half a car. Who's giving up more car when they make cheese? UK gave up a third of a car. China gave up half a car. It's clear that China had, had a bigger opportunity cost. The UK had a lower opportunity cost when making cheese. The UK has cheese 
uh, has cheeses for its comparative advantage, cheese production. So the UK um, has, can you read that? Oh, I won't write it, it's too long. But the UK has the comparative advantage in cheese production. They should specialise in trade, assuming no transport costs, uh, assuming they can, the terms of trade allow them to hit the right price, uh, where it's advantageous for both, for both countries, they can actually benefit from trade. Um, that's the basis of comparative advantage theory. Of course, the real world is far more complicated. There are many more, there are many more um, countries than just two countries. There are millions of products. The products are not the same when they're made in one country or another. There are um, issues like uh, transportation costs and uh, the perceived quality of the products uh, and a million other issues. But the, the theory suggests that even when a country, like in my example, China, has absolute advantage everywhere, there can still be a point to specializing in trading. The only time you wouldn't specialize in trade is if the ratio of opportunity cost ratios were the same in both countries. They are not here. This is three to one. This is two to one. But if I made a slight adjustment, now, the opportunity cost is exactly the same. In both countries, when making a car, they give up two cheeses. In both countries, when making a cheese, they give up half a car. There's no point to specialising and trading because the opportunity cost ratios are the same in each country. Okay? I hope that was clear. And, uh, and I hope that you understand that now.